I know three ways that we can do this question. Now, um, let me just give you a bit of insight back to my, my history with these. I always got frustrated with these questions, perms and cons in general, or majors, because I viewed them as kind of like the opposite of calculus. With calculus, you can always check. It's so easy to know. Did I integrate right? You just differentiate and you should come back to the same theme, right? And, and vice versa. Uh, and you can, always, you can do sense checks and, you can, and it's quite easy to tell whether, what's going on, right? But with these, you come out with some number like 90,720 and you're like, is it right? How do I know whether it's right or not? You go to the back of the book, but that of course doesn't answer the big question of, well, how did they know <laughs> that it was 90,720 and not something else? Okay. Now here's the way they know. They don't just solve it one way. If you have the right answer, you should be able to solve it one way and then approach it in a whole different style, right? And get the same number and then approach it another way and get the same number. That's one of the great things about mathematics. No matter which path you go, you should arrive, if you've used an accurate method, you should arrive at the same conclusion. So I'm going to show you three ways. These are all sort of principles that they're not about like, oh, okay, this is a set of steps that I can memorize. Because you'll get a different question and it will ask you a slightly different thing. These strategies will work with this particular question, but sort of take the overall principles as much as you can. I'll refer to them in a second. Okay. So here comes approach number one. And I think this is probably the most common one, which is why I'm doing it first. And I'm calling this, you might want to label this, approach number one is by cases. by cases. Now, I've got to try and break down this question. And what makes it challenging in the beginning is that, what do we got? I think n is supposed to be to the right of d, right? But you don't know where either of them are. And so it's like, well, I can't say, oh, there are only eight spots for n, because depending on where d is, it's like, well, there might not be eight spots. There might be only one spot for n. And d can move anywhere it likes, right? but it can only move in nine spots. Do you see that? There are only nine spots for it to sit. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try and think about each of the cases for where D will be. I'm not gonna do all of them because I should be able to get a pattern. You can see I've got three because three is my standard way of establishing a pattern. So let's think about it nice and easy. I'm gonna start with the left, right? So the way I would word this, and I actually would write this, um, I'll show you at the end of this, I'll show you the way I've written up my full solutions rather than the way I've talked through it. But I would actually say, next to this diagram, I would say, fix the letter D in position one. That's what I would actually say, right? Now, once you've done that, we deal with the restrictions one at a time, okay? The other restriction is on N, right? So where can N be? How many places can it be? It can be anywhere. There are, yeah, there can, it can be in any of these spots, right? So since it can be in any of them, I actually can consider N as one of the regular letters, right? So what I've got is, being that N can be anywhere, right? Therefore, it's like, well, I've just got eight letters that I can place in any way I like, right? So the way to arrange eight letters is eight factorial, but don't forget, I do, I do have repeats. What I'm gonna do is, you notice I have repeat, I'll have repeats every time I do this. So I'm gonna worry about the repeats right at the end. Let's just think about eight letters. Okay, so that's fine. Okay, so I've got that. The next case, this was the first case. The next case is, well, let's just shuffle D over. Let's just shuffle him over like that, okay? So then, again, I asked the question, where can N be? And this time, it's a little trickier, right? How many spots have I got left? How many spots can N occupy? Okay. Um, any of these spots, of which there are seven, right? These two are taken, well this is taken, and this one is, doesn't fit our conditions, so therefore I've got seven left, okay? So there are seven ways to place N, right? After you've placed N, how many letters do you have left to place? You've got, you've placed D, you've placed N, you've got nine letters in total, so there are seven left to place in all of the other spots. Are there any restrictions on the other letters? No, they can go anywhere they like. So there are seven factorial ways of placing the final letters, the remaining letters. Does that make sense? Wait, so, one second. Why did you say eight factorial before? Yeah. And why did we say eight factorial times seven? That's a great, that's a great question. I will point out that this is the case, right? Think back to how I arrived, and this is, pause on this, take your time, don't rush through it. You must ask these questions. <coughs> why did I say eight factorial? Because I placed the first letter, and then I realized, you know what, n can be anywhere. There are, you know, like I've looked at, this is the number of spots I can go, but n can be any of those. So since n is just one of the regular eight letters, 
It's just this problem becomes, this first case just becomes put eight letters somewhere, and that's eight factorial, right? Uh, and I'll worry about the repeats afterwards, okay? Another way of thinking about it is, just like I thought here, how, where, can, where can n be? And the answer is in eight spots. And then I have seven random letters that I don't care where they go. They can go in seven factorial ways. Okay, does that make sense? Okay, and this will be helpful because it'll help me establish my pattern. Okay, I've done case one, I've done case two. Case three, where's D gonna go? So the way I would write this is I would say, fix the letter D in position three, okay? Where can N go now? There are six spots left for M, right? Because this one's taken and these two are duds. So I will say, here we go, there are six ways to place M, and then I've got seven more letters, right, that I have to place. Are there any restrictions on where they go? No. So there are seven factorial ways to place the remaining letters. Do I have enough of a pattern yet? You can see what's going to happen, right? Every time D shuffles over, it's, it's making this number smaller because N gets crowded out gradually, okay? Now, remember I said to you, um, N can be, sorry, D can be in nine spots total, right? Because there are actually nine spots, right? But it can't actually be, right? Because if it went over all the way to the end, right? D's over here. How many spots are there for M? There are zero. So in fact, I can consider as a case, the ninth case, right? But see how I started with eight? If I'm counting down nine times, the last one will be zero spots for N, and then you place your other letters, but it doesn't matter because there are no ways that fit your conditions, okay? But I, I'm not gonna worry about that because it doesn't add to my total. Okay, so now that I've done three cases, I think I've established the pattern. So therefore, the total ways are. So I have a look. The first one, case one, eight times seven factorial. Next one, second one, seven times seven factorial, and then six. All the way down, it does go down to zero, right? So I'm gonna say there's a seven factorial every time. Did you notice that? And then there's eight, and then there's seven, <coughs> and there's six, right? Now, quick question, why am I adding and not multiplying these numbers? Yeah, because you can't have these at the same time, right? The letter D can't be in position one and in position two simultaneously. So I'm adding these, not multiplying. Make sense? And of course, I've got some repeats, don't I? I've got some repeats. Two factorial. Two factorial. Okay. All right. Now, um, at this point, you remember I said, oh, the number, the number this actually ends up being is immaterial. Doesn't matter. However, there's something interesting about this number. If you go ahead and you calculate it, and my memory is good, I think you should find you get exactly 45,360. Okay? Now, keeping in mind we've done these earlier parts of the question, right? What's the connection between this number and the other numbers? It's exactly half of the total. Exactly half of the total. Now, that's not always a thing. Uh, that doesn't always mean something. But it should at least make you question a little bit like, hmm. Is that a coincidence that it's half, okay? And in mathematics, it's almost never a coincidence. So turn the page over, turn the page over, and I'm going to, I'm going to show you another approach, 